Hello everyone, it's Shaw here at the Inquisitive Women Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you're returning, thank you. If you're new here, I do hope that you stick around. Be sure to subscribe as well. It's all free. It's all free. So today on the show, and I have to say, I'm really enjoying doing these podcasts. It's episode 21 of season two. Season one, obviously, I'm still wetting my feet. I'm still getting used to it all. But season one, I was lucky enough and blessed enough to interview some amazing people. But this season as well, I'm just so pleased to talk to the people that I really want to talk to uh, and that I'm interested in. And one topic that I've always loved is yoga, meditation, yoga, all of that stuff. It's a practice and it's... um. It's something that you have to commit to. And just like all habits, you do get used to it. And I think there's a misconception about yoga that you have to be super extra flexible. And you don't. A little stretching, a little movement. People often ask me, well, what's the difference? My Some of my family members have said, well, what's the difference between yoga and just stretching, doing a bit of stretching? And that's a good question. But I always say yoga is a spiritual practice. It's connected to spirituality. So you're not just doing poses in yoga. You're doing it with mindfulness. You're using your breath. So you're very aware of the breath. With regular exercise and stretching, yes, you, you could be, but a lot of times people hold, hold in their breath. You all know that because we've all done it. With yoga, it is a mindset and it's a practice. It's a spiritual practice. So you would be connected somehow. You you know, you have an intention as well. That's different. So, okay, with exercise, you will have an intention, um, an intention to either become more fit, to lose weight, to gain weight, perhaps. Some people need to gain weight. So lots of different ways that you might want to, well, that sounds a bit odd, you'd exercise to gain weight, but you might become, you might want to become, what's the word, Um, more strength wise, you know, you want to become more toned, that's the word I'm looking for, toned, Um, simple word, I just couldn't find it, you want to become more toned, so with yoga, you would um practice in a way that is mindful so you're very aware of your movement how you feel you're quite aware of your breath what well, I say quite but you you would be very aware of your breath and the, your intake your out how you breathe out you would become aware again of what you're thinking and your intention so intention is the key and you're doing yoga for a reason. So the poses have names and they're connected to different chakras or different areas of your body. And sometimes, and it's not always because there's different practices um, and, and different ways to practice and different schools of yoga, which we're going to talk about on the podcast today. But my guest is and i'm i feel like i'm jumping around a bit i'm afraid this is who i am (laughs) so i will jump around sometimes i'm sure if you've been here a while you you're used to that um so i'll finish my thought with the with the stretches and the practice the reason why it's different from regular exercise is the intention but also it's a spiritual practice i love the relaxation part and because i'm quite a um, my I'm in my head quite a bit. I, I'm an air sign, so I'm air as well. And it's an odd mix. So there, there's a lot of, um, for me, relaxation. There's a lot of relaxation of my mind. That's what I like. And also um, it calms down your your energy level. So, you know, as a, as a child, I was quite, I, I don't know if hyper is the word, but I certainly love to be outside running around, playing, you know, any, ask any friend, and I'm connected to most of them still, even now, uh, we're still connected, childhood friends I grew up with, we're still connected. Any of them can tell you, I was always sort of knocking on doors saying, come outside, you're going to play, come outside and play. 
and they would come to me, come outside to play. We had a bike club. We had, um, you know, I used to race people on my bike. I've still got a scar to to, to show it. Um, we 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 were active. We had a dance club. Oh my goodness! We used to charge people to come and see us dance. We used to charge all family members, and they played their little whatever it was, ten p, fifteen p, cents or whatever it was, and they all came to see us. Uh, so we perform, but there was always something going on. So I loved uh, very active, you know. The bike, my bike was the thing. And I would always be outside. I've got a clip. I've got, I'm, if I can, I may be able to insert it. I, you know, sometimes I say this in my intros and James always says, you know, try not to say you're going to do it if you're not going to do it. My intention is that maybe I'll do it. <laughs> and the goal, of course, with the Inquisitive Rim podcast, the whole reason I started it is uh, to enlighten, to teach, to inform uh, through my guests and, of course, whatever I can contribute, uh, you know, about how to navigate through life, how we all get through it. And I like speaking to professionals who've done some work, who've, who've got... The reason why is because they have focused in, honed in on an intention, a goal, which is whatever it may be. It could be therapy, it could be spirituality, mediumship, it could be psychotherapy, it could be anything. Uh, business, it could be business as well. Being an author, whatever your whatever is an actor, actress is. As you know, if you look back, I've interviewed lots of different people. People teach acting, and the podcast is about all that. To say that my guest today is the lovely Devin Garcia, who is a flexibility yoga teacher. She owns uh, her business, Stretch Love Yoga, and she really focuses, and this is her intention, her intention is to help busy women get past some of the roadblocks they may encounter to improve their flexibility. So that's the thing about the posing. I often joke, and I've said this on the podcast before, you can do loads of downward dogs and you can put all your poses on Instagram, but if you haven't dealt with your mindset, then it's just a pose and anybody can pose. Not everyone can do those back bends and that, have that flexibility. And this is where Devin comes in. She teaches people how to become more flexible and also around your mindset about flexibility. Sometimes our minds can be our worst enemies as well. So people will often not want to try yoga because immediately they think, oh no, I, there's no way I can touch my toes or bend, do a back bend or do anything else. Um, and so Devin helps people in that way. She's got a huge following as well. She's got lots of people come to her. Uh, she also does online, which is brilliant. So because, you know, she is in Canada, uh, it's, you can't really physically go to her every day, every week. Well, maybe some of you can, you know, people have those lives, but a lot of you may want to join her classes online. And it was a real treat to speak to Devin. She's got such a lovely energy and she talks about being a mother and how busy that gets and, you know, how she navigates her way through that as well. And she provides private yoga classes to people who who didn't want to practice in a big group. Some people don't like to go to these big yoga classes. And, um, you know, for me, I dip in and out. I may want a yoga class and, you know, I have my own practice that I do at home. It just depends on where you are, especially when you travel. I find that it's nice to find a yoga class just to go and get that different energy. Um, she's got over 10 years of teaching experience. So she teaches very large groups, small groups, um, and of course her private classes. And her flexibility attracts students who are looking to increase uh, their range of motion. Teaching yoga is Devon's passion. And this is what I'm interested in. What are you passionate about? What do you like to do? The mindset shift is important with 
any exercise you do, even with running. Some people believe that there's no way they can run for 10 minutes. And that's a mindset. Actually, you probably can. You may need some changes in how you try to do it. But if your intention is to run for a full 10 minutes, then you will do it. Meanwhile, I hope you're all having a fantastic day and you've had a great week and you'll have a great week ahead. So without further ado, let's welcome Devin to the show. Okay. Devin, hello. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. So, Devin, let's go back just a little bit. Um, where did you first learn about yoga? When, when so, it's, yeah. it's a funny little story. Um, uh, in my early, early 20s, a friend of mine invited me to go to a hot yoga class for exercise. And I had never gone, gone to yoga before, and neither had she. And before this, I never did anything alone. I, I always felt really uncomfortable doing stuff by myself. So I got to the studio and she didn't show up. And it was kind of like one of those fork in the road moments. Do I go home into my comfort zone or do I just try something on my own for once? <laughs> so I went and I loved it. Uh, it didn't feel uncomfortable because nobody was talking to each other or really even too much looking at each other they were more concerned with themselves and um, I mean I wasn't amazing by far but I, I'm a naturally flexible person so I felt like oh this is something I could be good at so I, I stuck with it I really fell in love with it like uh, right away movement wise and um, I didn't even consider anything beyond movement or exercise it was kind of like uh, I didn't know about the whole mindset aspect and uh, as I practiced more and more it was kind of like uh, the little seeds of mindfulness were planted and started to bloom and I was able to connect more to my body because I had like zero mind body connection before that uh and then it helped me to realize uh the areas that i needed work because i like i said i'm really flexible but i didn't have any strength so my joints were starting to feel a little bit weird and then i explored some strengthening stuff and that helped to build a better foundation for me to become more flexible with uh stability and uh and i was so thankful that i was able to create that mind body connection and and start using uh that mindfulness to help with um like other things other than physicality like stress in my job or the daily commute and stuff like that so that was uh that's what made me want to explore becoming a yoga teacher <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that was one of my questions about flexibility I was going to ask you because I've seen some of your poses and that. So you were you saying that you were always very flexible. Yeah, but I wasn't able to do like really, um, really, really deep like back bends and stuff like that because uh, there's a big element of strengthening. You need to do that. And uh and I just didn't feel like I could hold myself up if I was going to do <laughs> a pose. I felt like I was going to fall and hurt myself or hurt my arm or something, you know. Um, so, yeah, I actually um, I have a little thing I can share with your audience for free at the end. But that mentions some some stuff about that. But in that uh, I talk about how important strength is for flexibility. So I definitely, definitely needed to find a balance, not just be kind of like a wet noodle, you know? <laughs> yes, that's such a good point as well. But thank you for that. Yes, I'm sure our audience will love it. But that's a good point because, you know, we see on social media, all these people posing on top of mountains, in the sea, in a road, you know, everywhere in the living room, in the, on the kitchen table. We see people doing these amazing poses and for some people, it may feel intimidating. Um, but for some people, like, like yourself, you already had some flexibility and it inspired you rather than feeling sort of intimidated, it inspired you to, to continue. 
Well, luckily for me, when I first started, social media wasn't as big as it is now. Um, I can totally see why it would be overwhelming for a beginner to see some really crazy deep poses and feel like, well, I can't do that. Like, why even start? Um, So I always try to be really inclusive for people. Like, if you're very inflexible but you want to do the splits it doesn't mean you won't ever be able to but it's kind of like you have to manage your expectations you know you, you're not going to be able to get it in like a week so uh, don't give up right away you know um, a really great example like I was saying I'm, I'm not strong uh, so many people in classes I would go to if they were doing handstands like pretty much everybody in the class could do it against the wall and it took me years I couldn't even kick my feet up because I didn't have the strength and it didn't bother me because I'd already uh, cultivated that mindfulness that uh, you know I am where I am in my practice and maybe one day I'll be there and maybe I won't and I'll just be uh, inquisitive about getting there you know (laughs) yeah excellent yes now again a really good point for people because you know, you don't have to aspire to do those poses. It is a practice, isn't it, yoga? So you will continue to practice. And But Devin, why is it that some of us are able to do this? But I mean, not me. I try. But, yeah. but some people try and do this, but, and they need a crash team or they need, you know, so you, you why is it that some people, I, I mean, I've seen children at like four and five just split, just do the splits. Look, look, I'm doing the splits. It's like, how did you do that? Is that it's something we're born with or is it hereditary, do you think? Um, I think like, I, I believe that everybody is um, naturally falls somewhere on the spectrum of more flexible or more strong. So I think some people like myself uh, would be able to just get into the splits without hurting themselves. But then that also kind of makes other people want to do the same thing. So um, I know a big thing that so many people do is put on socks and try to just slide into the pose. And then that can create a major setback because you can really injure yourself doing that because there's such a perception that it's just flexibility but there like I was saying it's that's a big um, importance on the balance of finding the strength and the flexibility so that you can keep your your muscles and your ligaments and joints and everything safe when you get into the pose so like some people it might only take a week because maybe they're just they just need a little bit of um tweaking to get into a pose safely and for other people it might be years but um like i I love to say practice makes progress not perfection never perfection because there's always room for growth and uh, a really good example is what if you do get into the splits are you just going to be like well i got it i'm never doing any splits again or are you going to be like oh this is amazing what where can I go with this and and how is this helping me and my body and and is this practice of flexibility also making my choices or my mindfulness more flexible at the same time (laughs) yeah yeah so you bring up mindfulness and that is an important point you know I always joke about that people on on uh Instagram doing downward dogs and I was saying you know you can do all the downward dogs you want but if you don't work on what's up here it's just a downward dog (laughs) you know so is it how how if people are listening to this and they're thinking yes okay I do want to start something I think it will be good how do you incorporate the mindfulness with the yoga So there's like so much judgment in yoga. Um, A lot of teachers will say, well, if you're not being mindful and your intention to practice isn't uh, on um, like traditional yoga and the marriage of um, mind and body, then you're not doing yoga. And then that can also be discouraging for people because like myself, I just started for exercise. So if you're just starting for exercise that is beautiful I kind of feel like it's not the teacher's job to um, try to 
understand why somebody is practicing. For me, I'm more like, uh, I'm here to guide you towards what you want to be doing. And if I can plant those little seeds like I had planted in me, then that's wonderful. So really, um, uh, something that I think helped me in the beginning was being mindful of my breath. So when I started, if we were in a, any kind of lunge or warrior pose, I felt like I was going to die because my legs weren't strong. So I was like really um, not mindful of my breath. I w- had really short and shallow breaths. And um, over time, I started to pay more attention to what my breath was doing than how my legs were feeling. <laughs> and then if I was able to lengthen the breath, things became a little bit easier. So even though it's kind of like a, a natural um, a natural thing for you in the beginning when you're doing something hard to, to really like breathe quickly, it's kind of counterintuitive because if you can breathe slowly and deeply, then that can really help you. And then as I became more mindful with my breathing, then I was able to cultivate more of a kind of like a meditation um, without knowing it. And uh, in Shavasana was a really great example. I I hated Shavasana when I started. I was like, I have a million things to do. I have a million things running through my head. Why am I just lying here? I could be doing so many other things. And as I became more aware of my breath, then I was able to calm my mind a bit more in uh, Shavasana. And that was all, that was all organic. That was nobody leading me into, um, meditation or anything that all just came with practice and that's what I really hope I can cultivate for some of my students because I know how much it helped me but I'm not forcing it on anybody um yeah and then I became more curious about meditation guided and and uh different forms of it so I feel like there's like little steps that uh yoga naturally leads you towards and there doesn't need to be any forcing Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. Yes, absolutely. Speaking of Javasana, um, I used to joke and say, you know, restorative yoga is my thing. <laughs> I just, I could do restorative all day. <laughs> just lie there and relax. Maybe turn for a bit and turn, no. But I was drawn to Ashtanga yoga because of the challenge for me. Um, But let's talk about the different schools of yoga or different practices, different thoughts in yoga. Um, What do you teach? And what do you think about all the, the different schools? So I'm trained in Hatha yoga. And uh, I when I'm teaching, I like to put a little bit of flow in there as well as uh, some holding because I find that a mixture is really great. Um, Especially if you're working towards certain poses, uh, being in something for like a breath isn't really gonna help. Uh, build the muscles and the foundation (laughs) Um, but yeah I I also when I when I was early on in my practice was really drawn to Ashtanga as well because I felt like I felt like it made me feel strong and and it felt like kind of the exercise aspect of yoga even though there's a lot of uh, mindfulness in that as well but because you're moving with each breath it it felt like oh, I'm, I'm really getting some work in here. Um, yeah, and and I, I find that like some vinyasa, like some flows um, in the beginning of my classes to help uh, warm up the body is really great. And uh, like you mentioned, restorative, I, I had done a training on that uh, many years ago. And I really loved how, um, at least in that training, they were saying how, the poses are meant to be done with like zero effort in your body. So that can be, I know there's some people who are just like, they want to go, 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 but that can be so healing for your body and just so relaxing. So I I think like a a mixture is really great. Um, 
I, I even, I had done a training in aerial yoga. So on the silks. So that was, uh, that was kind of fun. I never ended up teaching it because I just, there's not a lot of studios that have it and, uh, but it was fun to do. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, there, I, I had done a, like a little workshop on, um, prenatal and postpartum yoga as well because that can be so helpful for moms uh being a mom myself I I know that <laughs> uh yeah there's so many different types and um I think it really depends on the season of your life that you're in of where you want to practice personally <laughs> no absolutely because kundalini yoga I was certainly drawn to that at a particular time in my life and then I drop it and then I go back to it and then I drop it and I go back to it. So I would totally agree with you. I think it's where you are and nothing has to be wrong. That's not what I'm saying. It, nothing has to be wrong. You just have to, you, you feel through it. I think you, you were drawn to, to, to it. And perhaps I could be wrong. Maybe that's why so many people were drawn to Berkram yoga when when it was huge uh because of the person but also because of what it represented and um i think that aspiration when the poses and everything but i always like to think about yoga as a shift from my everyday life into a nice space where i can have a little bit more control of my breath my body my mind um and that's for me that's inviting um, yes me too <laughs> it helps me to turn up on the mat it helps me to get there you know to even get the mat out so yes yeah yeah and some days like maybe you just want the exercise aspect and uh I think that's beautiful as well and some days maybe you don't want to move maybe you just want to sit in a restorative pose and just focus on your breath and letting your body unfold <laughs> and it's it's beautiful like uh, I've, I've said to a lot of moms as well that it can be hard for like a, a, a mindset sh shift uh, to go from thinking of oh I can go to a studio or a gym and I can drive there I can be like 15 minutes early, I find my spot I like, take a shower after, socialize, and before they know it, two hours has gone by, and then when you have children, it, that may no longer be possible. So just getting even like 10 minutes in here and there is, is totally fine, and that's still yoga. There's no judgment there, you know, if you're if your baby is uh, doing their tummy time and you're doing some yoga beside them, that's wonderful too. You're including your baby. <laughs> yes, exactly. And yeah, so I want to ask you about the misconceptions about yoga, but just picking up from what you were saying, why is it that it's better or what's the difference for people out there from having yoga with an instructor, you know, attending a class or even one online with an instructor to just doing it yourself. What are the advantages of maybe coming to see you or taking one of your online classes to getting a DVD or turning on the YouTube? I think it depends on your intention for the practice, uh, especially if you're a beginner. Um, you know, finding a DVD or a YouTube class or whatever is is a great start, but there's nobody giving you feedback of what's going on. And I know for me, when I started, I was a mess. I was like backbending in my downward dog and I didn't know. I was hyperextending all over the place and I didn't know. So having some feedback is something that can really help create the mindfulness and also help you to be safe in your practice, um, you know, in, in a, a DVD or on YouTube, somebody might be in the splits and you might think, oh, I'm going to slide into it so I can be in the splits as well. And having a teacher like me, I would never advocate for <laughs> sliding into the splits. Um, and so, yeah, safety uh, is a big thing I think of when I think of uh, the difference between a class that is pre-recorded versus one where the teacher is giving you some feedback and <clears throat> like if you've been practicing for a while 
then having a pre-recorded class, being able to do like an on-demand thing. Like I have, I have an on-demand mm -hmm. platform. Um, that's wonderful. Like, you know, you, like I was saying, if you can only get your practice in here or there in your own schedule, like maybe you have to practice at 11 at night because of your job or your children, like, that in that case, a pre-recorded thing is going to be great for you because you probably won't be able to find a teacher who can teach you that late. Uh, but yeah, if your intention is to progress and to learn a specific thing, or if you want to explore stuff like meditation and you have nowhere to, you have no idea where to start, then having an actual person can really help you to even if you only want to work with that person for a short, short amount of time, it, it can help you to uh, create that foundation and lead you in the direction you want to go. <laughs> yes. Certainly for me, I do enjoy going into a class. It, there's something about the shared experience as well. Um, as well, yeah. So what are some of the misconceptions about yoga? What, what are people thinking out there who don't know about yoga is it too woo woo I mean what are people think? yeah yeah I think we touched on it a little bit so looking at some of the Instagram people thinking you need to be super flexible to do yoga um, then you think like why even bother I can't even touch my toes in a forward fold but um, that is certainly not true you, you want to practice yoga to get more flexible and get more range of motion and mobility in your body so you won't have aches and pains uh, or at least you can stave off the aches and pains longer in your life um, and uh, I think uh, a big one as well is thinking well I'm, I'm I don't want the spiritual aspect so why would I do yoga and again you don't have to have that um that mindset going in, that's something that can come or not. Uh, maybe you just continue practicing yoga because you want to do the physical aspect for forever. And, you know, that's nobody's business, but your own. Um, yeah. And, and like I had said, some people think uh, they have to practice for an hour. And I don't uh, believe that being a mom myself, <laughs> having when, when my daughter was a newborn, if I could get 10 minutes in, in front of the TV, because I couldn't run off anywhere because she was right there uh that that is yoga as well you know you, you have to see what's going on in your life and in your body and that's also a practice of mindfulness um i knew i wasn't going to be practicing drop back back bends or or uh handstand scorpions when i was postpartum like you, you know it, being mindful of what's going on in your body is super important um and also just knowing that you don't have to get to those poses like even though you see them on social media all the time if you don't want to that's beautiful like you that's still yoga um and if you do want to but it's not happening right away just being like open to the practice and where it's taking you um yeah and that uh, a lot of people don't think that yoga is uh, a strength uh, mm. practice but it really requires a lot of strength um to have a solid foundation as well you, like I, I had mentioned before you don't want to be a wet noodle you also don't want to be a dry noodle <laughs> yeah no that's good and I would add to that um age I think people shouldn't think that you have to be young to do yoga absolutely um, what was her name again? Tao Portion Lynch. That's it. She died. Oh, yeah. Um, remember, she, she was amazing. I want to be like her. <laughs> she was fantastic. Um, and she did yoga until the day she died. So she lived to 101. That's, she only died in 2020. So just before the pandemic. Yeah. And also uh, weight. I think people think you've got to be really thin. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Again, because you see the, the people on Instagram, but um, it, it like your weight does not matter. Uh, it, it Yoga should be inclusive for everyone. Um, and you shouldn't feel judged if you want to practice. Absolutely. Uh, there is a called Jessamine Stanley. She's um, 
quite overweight. She describes herself as that. So I'm just using her words. Um, so she does a lot of yoga and, you know, she, I, th I think what she does is fantastic. So I think it's encouraging. Now I'm not advocating for, uh, a health problem because obesity is a health problem but you can still do some exercise and it doesn't yeah. have to be running uh it could be yoga and stretching flexibility it does improve your internal organs as well as how you feel and look um, absolutely yeah which could contribute to a shift in your eating and even like I, I'm a lot of my students, uh, like most of my students are women, but uh, a lot of men feel judged mm -hmm. doing yoga and they shouldn't. It's it's totally for any gender. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a very good point as well. Absolutely. It's for anyone. Um, and, you know, just speaking on that, your classes. So um how did you how did you think from doing yoga to saying yes okay this is great to thinking right i want to teach it as well how did that happen uh so i when i fell in love with the practice and i was learning about how how strength can really help the practice and and it's not talked about a whole lot um in many classes i had been to so um and i also felt that mind shift mindset shift um so I really wanted to help other people to feel uh like I did to to feel like less um stressed out in their daily life and and to have a fun little thing to to work towards uh in their life um just for themselves there's no like competition or anything uh and it was it can be like pretty pretty safe on your joints if you're if you're being uh, mindful in your body and you know like running and stuff is super fun for some people but it, it might not be super great on your joints uh, over time so that's something to really consider and yeah so I wanted when I decided to become a teacher I wanted to help other people feel the way I did and to teach them the the little things I had learned along the way uh, to help in their their practices um, yeah and before yoga being a yoga teacher speaking in public was terrifying for me I would get like the shaky voice and my face would go all red but um, my very first class was um, it was like a at the studio that I had done my teacher training so they they let the um, the teacher trainees be uh teachers every Sunday for um, a discounted class and my first class had 75 people in it <laughs> and I, I felt like okay this is like jumping in the deep end there's no tiptoeing into this pool <laughs> and I got through it and I figured to myself if I could teach that huge of a class then I can I can certainly continue on this path and uh, yeah and then I I was uh, running around to different studios and gyms uh, multiple times a day and then when the pandemic hit things shifted and I started to work towards online stuff and like you were saying before uh, you love being in a class and having that energy I have noticed there's like there's a few different types of people out there there's ones that love that energy there's ones that want to be completely by themselves and then there's ones that um that like live video classes because they can be in their own space but they still get a bit of that energy from the teacher and maybe if a friend or two is doing it with them so uh yeah i try to uh work with all of those people <laughs> yeah no yes and i can do all of them i mean some days i just want to be on my own and do yoga without any help i know what i'm doing i feel like every then again yes say i know where i'm doing. you don't know, know where you're going you start and then things flow so it is a flow so you know you don't well i don't do the exact same practice every day some people do i i used to but i shift and change so as you were saying I mean there's no 
set rule as such. You you do what you do and it, it serves you. And I think the yoga serves you, but you have to turn up to serve the yoga. <laughs> yes. Know? And your body, really. <laughs> and your body as well. What are some of your other daily practices, things that help you through the day? So um, in the in the morning when I wake up, I don't know if you've heard of oil pulling, but mm -hmm. I do that um, right mm -hmm. away. And that helps me to um, set my day up for uh, mindfulness and everything. I don't I'm not like talking on the phone and doing this and that because my mouth is full for like 10 to 20 minutes. And then uh, I find that to be a really good practice where I could just hone into myself and my breathing before I brush my teeth and have my, uh, my whole day going. Um, some days after, like right after that, some days I'm teaching classes and some days I'm, I'm not, I, I'm playing with my daughter. <laughs> um, but uh, for me, I have to work around my daughter's schedule. So I'm playing with her or going out to, um, you know, activities that she does or whatever and then I get my stuff in when she's uh, napping and after she goes to bed so when she's napping I will get whatever exercise that isn't yoga that I like to do like maybe I go for a swim or maybe I maybe I go and do a, a YouTube video or something you know and then after she goes to bed I work on my own practice so whether that's like you know, I go with the flow, like we were saying, maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's over an hour. And, um, and then I work on my business after that. And then uh, I'm a night owl. So <laughs> I get a lot in before I go to sleep. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yes. What's one of your favorite things about teaching yoga? My absolute favorite thing is when somebody reaches a goal of theirs whether it's like a physical goal or a mental goal and they share it with me and it's just like it feels like a little celebration that we have we're like yay <laughs> and uh and it's amazing so I, I just I absolutely love helping people and when they reach their goals it's just it's it's such a great feeling <laughs> so that keeps me going <laughs> yes I, I well I would think that's inspiring for both of you Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on mental health at the moment. Uh, it, well, there, I think there always has been, but it, because of social media, it's being amplified. So how would you say yoga helps in that way for people? So for me personally, uh, when before I started yoga, I was one of those people that had a million things running through my mind all the time. So uh, I found that the mindfulness that I cultivated through my practice really helped me to uh, calm my mind and focus my mind. Um, and uh, like for me personally, what I did to do that was just count my breaths. So if I was in Shavasana or if I was before I was going to sleep or something with my eyes closed, um, focusing on that number of my breath, like not counting how long the breath is, which helps for some people. But for me personally, it was just counting each breath and, and not like, oh, when I get to 30, this or that happens. I was just counting the breath to focus my mind away from all the, the noise that was going through it. So I found that to be a really easy and helpful practice personally. <laughs> and um, being able to quiet my mind a bit really helped with, um, I mean, I never had any, like serious anxiety or depression or anything like that, but just like the daily, like you know, anxiety that anybody faces or little stressors or annoyances, I found the, that that really helped. So if anybody is thinking of how can I calm my mind? That's how I did it. So it might be helpful for you. <laughs> yes, because you're engaging the mind, body, and I, I'll, I will use the word spirit, guys out there who don't believe in any of that, but soul for, for others who are accepting, you know, but it's all the same for me. So yeah, it engages mind, body, soul, 
And that is the trinity as such, that kind of, that's the link, that's the whole in holistic. And that is what we're aspiring to. And of course, we can't walk around like that all day, you know, however long we're awake all day. That look, that would look really strange. Yeah, even that would create some anxiety if you're just counting in your head all day long. <laughs> exactly. But I bring this up to say we have to do, I think, what we find helpful. And it doesn't mean you, you, you suffer from anxiety or, you know, it doesn't mean you've got a mental health problem or anything. But everyday life, as you were saying, can bring everyday anxieties. Absolutely. We've got schedules. We've got things to do. We've got people, children to feed. or we're, You've got stuff to do. And it, sometimes people don't move quick enough or the partner doesn't move quick or whatever it is. The dog isn't eating fast enough. Whatever it is, <laughs> it can get to you. So, yes. Having something, I call it a toolbox, having something in your back pocket can help. And absolutely. Help is a good, good place to start. <laughs> so, what would you tell someone who is maybe listening to this, watching this, maybe on YouTube and thinking, okay, I'll try it. Finally, I'll try a bit of yoga. Um, what would, how would they start? What's a good way to, to start? I would try a whole bunch of different things. So there, when I started, um, there wasn't really yoga online other than YouTube. And I personally didn't even consider that. And I'm glad I didn't because I probably would have felt like, oh, this is free. Why would I do anything else? And then I might not have um, cultivated better uh, practices and built a better foundation. For me, there was um, there was little hot yoga studios popping up on every street corner in my area. So I went around to all the different studios to do their intros because it was cost effective. And um, and it helped me to have like a little sample of each studio until I was able to find the one that I liked. Uh, so I would recommend doing something like that. Or if you like online, uh, there's there's trials for pretty much everything. So you could do the trials for all of these different things until you find the thing that really speaks to you. Um, and then you're also learning different, um, the ways different teachers teach and what speaks to you and at the same time you're being cost effective <laughs> yes absolutely because you don't have to go to india you don't have to go to thailand you know you don't have to go to shanghai you can do yoga you, going to those places doesn't make you spiritual you can do <laughs> you can learn all these things in your own living room in your back garden, wherever you are. And yes, as you were saying, you know, try different things. And then maybe, a, you know, a trip to India might happen. <laughs> you know, that's good. I always like to look at, you know, monks who feel they've got to go away and disconnect completely from the world in order to learn meditation. I admire that. However, I think the person who remains, you know, for example, in the city with a thousand noises and whatever else is going, a thousand children, you know, a thousand whatever, and learns to stay calm, meditate, do their yoga. That's my champion. <laughs> Remain in life and still have your, your sanity, your practices and not disconnect totally yeah it. it's not to and take even, from them but yeah yeah like you were saying the noise of cities like the actual physical noise but there's like the noise of online as well uh it can be so overwhelming and you might think i have to spend tons of money i have to get the best clothes i have to spend thousands of dollars to go to india it doesn't have to be that way and the clothes that you need are just stuff that you can stretch in really <laughs> that you feel comfortable <laughs> absolutely. absolutely right that was another aspect people think they've got to get because there's so much promotion about these yoga pants or this yoga top and the yoga bra and 
the yoga mat and there's so much out there that you've got to buy but you haven't you can use a towel for a mat you don't have to buy any of it <laughs> yeah I mean you know you look at your own budget and just work within that like uh, if you do want to go out and buy stuff that's great it's, it's fun shopping <laughs> but it's if it's not in your budget you definitely don't have to make it an expensive uh, experience yes it doesn't have to be a barrier to you starting a practice that's going to help so do you do anything else do you know for me i i have a walk every day if, if i can i'll do two um although i have there's a new app here in the uk on the nhs which is our national health service it's to learn how to run um so i've just downloaded that so i'm looking at it doing that because I, I, I'm not a great runner but I'm very interested in it um, and so I'm starting that but for me getting outside feet on the ground um, barefoot in the grass that kind of thing you know playing with the animals that helps what are some of the things sort of everyday things that help you outside of yoga so I always do some strength training because I, I honestly feel like I'm the type of person if I don't do it for a week then I lose like so much of my muscular progress <laughs> I can hold on to flexibility in my body but not so much strength so I always incorporate that that really really helps me um what and do you use um kegs or weights what do you um, in my home, we have dumbbells and uh, uh, a couple of kettlebells. So I, I use those mostly. And uh, we also have a weight machine, but I don't use that too much. But sometimes I do. Uh, I just find that for me, I have to be engaged and the weight machine can feel a little bit boring. <laughs> So I don't use it as much. Um, but yeah, so I use dumbbells basically for, for strengthening. And um, my, being a, a mother to a, a toddler, I am outside walking a lot. And before having her, I probably wouldn't be. But I'm really grateful that she kind of forces me because it's so great to be outside and walking. Uh, we've, we've had a few smoky days over here when we can't really go outside because of forest fires but um when the air quality is great we're outside all day long and swimming swimming for me I'm my friends call me a mermaid I love being in the water um hopefully warm water our pool here in our little townhouse complex uh, has been very cold so <laughs> I've been navigating that <laughs> But um, yeah, swimming, I love, I find I'm able to, that's like me time. I, I can just tune into myself and feel great because it's so good on your joints <laughs> and cool down, <laughs> especially when the water is cold. <laughs> oh, yes. So that must be your element, water. I think we're drawn to different elements. Uh, you know, like some people just cannot swim. And it's not because they haven't been taught. They're just never going to be good at it. Um, because maybe they just, that's not their thing. It's not their yeah. So you are drawn to, to, to water. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. Water is lovely, especially ocean and seawater. I, I find it's just the movement, the fluidity of it all just standing there and even the sound <laughs> oh the sound i i wanted to ask about as well when you are in, within your practice and you're distracted or something happens the doorbell rings or your daughter does, you know something happens what do you do uh, you so if i sometimes i do practice when with my daughter uh so i like to encourage um like self play with her so she is a little bit more independent so when she's doing that uh, I'll maybe like pop into some poses behind her or whatever so that I can keep an eye on her but still do my own thing and then I sometimes she'll like jump all over me and it's just it's a laugh you know uh, it, there's no like get off of me I'm doing a pose <laughs> um, and I love the fact that sometimes she'll just turn around and 
stare at me and then try to do the same thing. So I think it's like, oh, I'm, I'm planting the seeds so early on in her. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if something distracts me, like the doorbell or whatever, um, I try to not be annoyed, if, especially if I was about to do something really um, difficult. And sometimes it's easier than others, but I just try to like zone back into what I was doing. Um, it doesn't happen too often when I'm doing that after she goes to sleep like at night but if she's teething or something and she keeps waking up like (laughs) I just know okay the practice isn't gonna happen today (laughs) and then at that point I get annoyed right so I have the practice shifts from physical to mental Uh, I have to start being like oh you know something is bothering her I just have to be here to support her and uh, I have to breathe I have to remind myself to stay calm because even though part of me is annoyed that it's cutting into my me time like she's a baby and she needs help (laughs) so uh, that's a a really good example of when I have to shift my mindset to uh, something else to help keep me focused from being annoyed (laughs) yeah oh that that's a really good example actually yeah and also what you were saying earlier that you know if she jumps on you you're not like get off of me that's that would be a brilliant meme you know the, the calm cool yoga instructor and a child jumps on them like oh. <laughs> that's <laughs> what's the purpose of yoga um yeah exactly so that's a really good one um but yes and I'm glad you explained that that um you have to you shift then to to your own mindset and prioritize what's important here yeah absolutely it's like um you know what half of me wants to be doing a certain thing but the other half knows I need to be doing something else (laughs) yes yeah exactly because we all want to yeah do do what we want to do we're the boss of us so we want to just do what we do but yeah that will never change (laughs) No, this was brilliant because I think a lot of people do want to hear from someone like yourself who teaches, who's done the work. And when you did your qualification, was it everything you you thought it would be? Was it helpful? Was it not helpful? Because I've heard different things from people. The first, my 200 hour that I did was amazing. And I felt like it was life changing. The one thing that always it kind of annoyed me at first, but it always sticks with me is that um, when somebody was like, what's the right way to do this or that? The teachers were always like, there, there is no right way. Like um, what is the intention behind it? And I always felt like at first, like that's such a non-answer, just answer the question. (laughs) But as I reflected on it, I totally agree with that. And um, uh, it's kind of like, there's, there's no shoulds. It's like, what, what is, um, what's the benefit and what um, is, is there anything dangerous happening? If so, let's move away from that. And, uh, and then just try to figure out the intention of what you want to do and work towards that. And then I did my 300 hour after that. And I found, well, not like right after I had been teaching for a little while, I found that one to be really uh, not helpful and kind of annoying (laughs) because, uh, the, the teacher was basically just talking about um, relationships the whole time. And uh, he, he was really unfocused on what we were working towards. And I really didn't feel like I learned much and felt, felt like kind of a waste of money. <laughs> but it was, it was a good learning experience to not just uh, follow a teacher because I know them, uh, you know, every teacher is going through different seasons of life so I guess for him that season was talking about relationships and not about (laughs) yoga (laughs) so much (laughs) wow 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 (laughs) (laughs) well you you were patient that's all I can say (laughs) Um, but yeah no that wouldn't have been great but I like I like what you said everybody's going through a stage of life (laughs) interesting yes I've heard different you know, different views from 
from people who've taken different yoga you know classes and that and everybody teaches differently and everything but sometimes and i think that's the same with everything with any course you take um uh, you know there's some things i liked about psychology and some things i didn't like and still don't <laughs> so or things <laughs> i disagree with you know they completely ignore spirituality so it, those kinds of things um the research, though, on yoga is good. The outcomes are very good. I still think they need to do more research because there's so many case studies that you, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of yoga schools and teachers. And so I think because it's seen as spiritual and spirituality or that they're not put it, wanting to put the science behind it. Um, but it's like exercise. They push that. But yoga is also exercise. Um, so mental health, they push that, but yoga also addresses mental health. So. Yeah. And like you were saying, there's so many different schools and there's not like, a, you don't have to have a whole lot of um, qualifications, I guess, to, to run a, a yoga school. So um, if anybody's listening and considering becoming a yoga teacher, that's, I would say to really, really research Um like I was lucky with my first one because I just did the training at the studio that I absolutely loved. But then I did my second one with them and I really disliked it. So you got to, um, I know that if there's one really close by you, it seems like really convenient, but make sure you do your research so that you can have the best experience possible and learn the, the best information possible. Helpful advice. Yeah. And maybe that's your path to whoever's listening to go out of your comfort zone, out of your neighborhood, somewhere else. Maybe that is all, it's all one, isn't it? But just quickly going back, just lastly about intention, because I think that's so important. You, you mentioned intention several times during our interview as well. And I'm glad you have, because everything I believe we do is intentional. Well, but sometimes we're aware, sometimes we're not. Yes. And so with yoga, what is your intention? And how do you address that when you're teaching? For me, I feel like it shifts a lot. So um, like, uh, like sometimes it will be, uh, I just need to get some movement in. My intention is to uh, feel like I'm dusting off the rust or whatever if I've been really sedentary for whatever reason if it's my daughter or work or whatever um and sometimes it's more mindful so if I'm like oh my eye is twitching all the time something is obviously stressing me out I need to tune into myself and figure it out so I can uh, address the problem and get rid of this eye twitch or whatever is going on. Um, and then for, for teaching, my, my intention in teaching is always to make people feel included and uh, comfortable when they're practicing because I know how overwhelming it can be. Um, so I always, I, I'm never pushing anything on people and I, I'm just trying to listen and help guide them in the direction that they want to go in a safe and fun way. <laughs> and I always try to make it fun. I know some people feel that yoga, like you had mentioned before, is too woo woo. So <laughs> uh, I try to I try to make it fun for people. So it's a little bit more relatable and resonates with them a little bit more. <laughs> Yes, it's funny. I was telling somebody not long ago, why don't you try yoga? And they said, you mean the man in the diaper? <laughs> well, <laughs> because that's how they see things. It's very visual. This this is one of my best friends. And he, he, it's, he, he always has to describe something. And so he said, oh, the men in diapers. <laughs> so I, I, he's obviously seen pictures of, usually people in India with the yoga thing on yeah the cloth and so for him that's a diaper or nap he actually said nappy because he's English <laughs> so but I you know we have to break that barrier of yes okay that can happen but it probably won't happen in Canada you know probably what you probably you probably won't see that in, in the you know south end of London you're not going to see that happen <laughs> 
yeah, that's on the internet. And those pictures are from 1700s or something. <laughs> Yoga's been around for a very long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but, you know, your your approach, I think, is refreshing because it's inclusive. And what you're basically saying is, look, if you want to start, just start. But yes. just do your re- But with the training, do your research. Um. And also start, but go to different places. See what you like. See, what, Oh, yes, you also mentioned hot yoga. And I just wanted to be clear for people out there. Are you talking about half the yoga or so that they understand mm-hmm. what you mean by hot yoga? Yeah, so it's I find at least in my area, it's not as popular as it once was. But when I first started, there was hot yoga studio studios popping up everywhere. So the those studios are a room that is heated to about 35 degrees Celsius ish um, so that you really sweat. And I'd never sweat more in my life than that first class I took. Um, and it's kind of a combination of the room being humid. So it creates moisture on you as well as you working in a hot environment and you sweating yourself um and I believe what they had said was the um original thought behind that was to create an environment like India that is hot very often um but I think it was kind of people were like oh I'm sweating so I must be losing weight so that's why it was so popular at first Mm -hmm. Uh, and it can also help to warm up your body quicker to be able to do some um, advanced poses but I found that I personally prefer regular temperature because if you're sweating a lot your mat gets slippery you might not be able to do some really really deep poses because the environment is just not as uh safe to do it (laughs) i mean it for me it broke my concentration i was too focused on being so uncomfortable that i couldn't concentrate yeah like some people are like i love the heat so the temperature itself was never an issue for me and i especially loved it in winter (laughs) oh yes i'm sure but it can be like i i have a bunch of friends who uh they they're really bothered by the heat and that's all they could focus on so if that's the case then you're not going to be able to cultivate any mindfulness because all you're thinking about is how uncomfortable you are <laughs> that was me and I and I just never went back for more it was just usually I might go back to be tortured but no I didn't want to go back um but yeah so Yes, I think it's different for everyone, isn't it? And you go. But I think that like the way you were feeling must be the way a lot of people feel about it, because there really isn't as many hot yoga studios as there once was. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I know people were drawn to it for the weight loss thing, but yoga finally gave me some definition in my arms as well. So uh, the strength part I can totally vouch for. I I know how it, it that it works. I'm still not strong strong in my arms, but those poses are a gentle way. I love weightlifting too, but I think those poses are, are an allowing and a gentle way of saying you can do it. Just keep going. Um, look at what you look at. Look at how far you've come. Because you know when yes. you're. When you can stretch a little bit more, you notice those small gains. You really do. <laughs> yeah, and when you hit any milestone, it's encouraging, you know? <laughs> it, it really is encouraging. And some days you, you know, some days you won't get there. <laughs> some days you go back and I did that the other day and now I can't, but it's what I find. But you just keep going. Um, so, Devin, thank you. That's been amazing. All guys, uh, Devin's all the links to her social media and also her website will be in the show notes as well. And also, you offer online and a stream. I want to say streaming, but you mentioned it before. Um, what's it called again? Not streaming. Oh, Stretch Love Yoga on Demand. Uh, it. Yeah, it's like my okay. library of um, classes that you can do anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Perfect. That. And if people want to join, um, join in you have set classes that you start or can people just join at any time 
So for the on-demand, it's just a, a, a monthly subscription and they can do any of the classes anytime. But if they wanted to work with me live, then that's something we would have to um, figure out a timing that works for both of us. Perfect. And is it, isn't it wonderful to be able to do it all online and Zoom and everything else, it's just reaching more people. It's fantastic. Yes, it's so great being able to, uh, I have some friends of mine who are across the country who uh, I teach every week. So it's great. <laughs> it's wonderful. Well, I mean, thank you for the work you're doing. I know you're helping a lot of people. So well done. You've obviously found your niche. You found what you're, you're meant to do. It looks like you're in your groove. So keep going, keep doing it. Um, we'll, all, we'll all be in the classes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if anybody has any questions, just tweet her or, you know, just drop her um, a line. Um, and I'm sure you'll, you'll answer them when you can <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and and i'll give you the link for that uh free resource that i had mentioned earlier if anyone is interested It'll be wonderful i shall put it in the notes thank you once again your mental health is a priority nine pitches therapies offers gentle and soothing therapy for your mind body and soul these self-help recordings focus on improving the quality of your life by providing you what you need right now, be it confidence, positivity, restful sleep, or relaxation. The soothing, calming music has been specially composed to accompany the body of words created by me, an expert in this field, to help you to achieve the best result. Reprogram your mind using the most gentle and effective guided meditations that can help you to clear and cleanse any unwanted energy that may be negatively affecting your life. Improve the quality of your life in just a few minutes a day. Nine Peaches Therapies, Holistic Therapeutic Consultancy. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.